welcome Claudia Orenstein. Thanks so much, and it's my job, I guess, to introduce our guests. Uh, we're all guests here um, a bit, but uh, uh, first, uh, Manuel Moran, who is the director of, uh, one of the directors, you've directed together, of this uh, wonderful film we've just seen. Uh, and I have a little uh, bio for you uh, to let people know more about him. Uh, he was born in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and has worked as an actor, singer, writer, composer, puppeteer, film and theater director, and producer. Uh, here uh, in this country, Puerto Rico, Latin America, Europe, and, uh, and the U.S. here. Uh, he's the founder and artistic director um, of SEA, Society of the Educational Arts, um, with offices in Puerto Rico, Florida, and New York City. Uh, and Teatro SEA has, is uh, celebrating its 30th year, or now it's 33rd? 33rd year mm -hmm. uh, of producing work. Um, it's the first Puerto Rican organization dedicated to the arts and education with simultaneous operations in Puerto Rico and the United States. Um, its objective is to offer a real entertainment alternative with cultural value and educational quality for kids, the youth, and adults through bilingual educational uh, programs like workshops, seminars, theater, and other cultural artistic expressions. Um, and I should add that this summer, uh, Teatro Sea hosted its first international puppetry festival, which was quite an exciting event. Um, Manuel holds a BA from the University of Puerto Rico, an MA from NYU in musical and educational theater, and a PhD from NYU in educational theater. Um, and he's uh, studied all around the world um, and uh, done all this amazing work. Um, and Christiana Otero, who's with us, who also uh, was a co-director on the film, uh, is also from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Uh, he's an editor and producer and known for his work on National Puerto Rican, uh, Puerto Rican Day Parade, First Look and Raw Travel. His film work includes No Laughing Matter, Casa Daga, and Titeres en el Caribe Hispano, which this is one of three films that they worked on. Uh, he currently works as an editor at Cutting Edge Editing. Uh, so welcome. So glad to have you here at Hunter. And I'm really particularly excited about it because uh, I've actually known uh, Manuel for many years through all of our puppetry connections. Uh, and one thing that was not included in this, um, in this bio that I found is uh, his work with Unima USA, which is uh, part of the, it's the organization for puppetry that's connected, uh, that's here in the US, connected to the international uh, organization for puppetry. And, um, uh, he's been very, very active and a really important presence uh, in this world. And uh, I know that a couple of people I spoke to earlier, uh, un, you know, and those of us up here understand that there's this kind of, I don't want to say exactly hidden, but there's sort of a kind of underground world of puppetry. There's probably more kind of puppetry organizations and uh, festivals and uh, puppeteers than you might have imagined. It's a whole kind of network. Uh, that I'm really glad to be able to uh, introduce people to here at Hunter. Um, so I don't know, maybe we can start by, you could, this is, now uh, as I say, this is one of three films you made at the, sort of at the same time, one in Puerto Rico, one on the Dominican, puppetry in the Dominican Republic, and one on puppetry in Cuba, and I was with you in Cuba when you were working on that. Um, can you kind of take us through what, what the inspiration was for doing this, and then uh, the process of going through this really a huge volume of material, and I don't imagine there was any nice history of puppetry in Puerto Rico book to just turn to <laughs> for all of this, so uncovering all of this. So thank you, Claudia. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Centro. I started researching puppetry in Puerto Rico as part of my, my PhD and dissertation um, years ago. Um, there was no, and still till today, there's no like an actual book. I'm working on that. Uh, <laughs> it, that tells really the story of, of, of puppetry uh, in Puerto Rico. And probably perhaps the two or three chapters of my dissertation that is dedicated to puppetry is pretty, pretty much, you know, uh, one of the few things that exist. Uh, uh, so I started this research years ago while I was in school. And then through my work with UNIMA, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I was not only the, the president of UNIMA USA for a few years, but I'm also the current uh, vice president of UNIMA International. And part of the, re the, the work that I have to do is that I have to oversee the three Americas, like they call it, 
um, and one of the things that we were charged to uh, was to um, basically open or inaugurate or try to promote new national centers in the in the countries uh, of the in the Americas. So Cuba had it its uh, Unima Center uh, many years ago, and but for, but for 37 years they were not active. So I had to go to Cuba in 2000 and oh wow, in 2000 probably like 10 years ago uh, to go to I had to go to Cuba to inaugurate the new center of Unima there. When I got there, I was very excited. It was my first time in Cuba. Um, I was mesmerized by the activity, the puppetry activity, and the theater activity that I saw in Cuba. Um, to find out that there were 86 professional puppet theater troops in the island, I was like, what is this? Uh, said professional troops, now, let's not even talk about the, the amateur uh, troops. I, I was in shock you know, of the activity, and I said, we need to tell the world about this, because it was amazing what I, what I, what I found, what I saw there. And I had this crazy idea since I traveled the world. I've been in so many countries because of the work of Unima. Um, I, and every, every time I say I'm from Puerto Rico and I have to tell where Puerto Rico is, oh, next Cuba, everybody knows Cuba. Yeah, well, close to Cuba. <laughs> uh, and so I said, let me just go back and film a little bit. And my idea, my, our original idea, because I, I recruited my, my godson and my nephew, that's you know, our, our relation. Um, uh, was to to do one documentary on the three islands. On, I mean, on the Hispanic Caribbean, which is Cuba, Dominican Republic, and Puerto Rico. So we went two years later with a crew of five people. Christian, you know, we were very excited. We had a, a brand new camera and all that. It was like kind of like a family project. Uh, my brother-in-law was 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 there as well, working with us one of my best friends, so we were all to working together uh, and we decided to interview um, close to 20 um, pioneers or practitioners of puppetry in Cuba. Um, I was mesmerized with their stories. Each interview was like 20, 25 minutes, 30 <laughs> minutes. Uh, we were you know, basically gathering information. Then we went to Dominican Republic and again, we interviewed like 17 uh, practitioners and, and uh, you know, puppeteers and pioneers. We actually went, had to go to Orlando, to Miami to find people, and then we went to Puerto Rico and the same story happened. So when we finished our, you know, you know, interviews, we had like six or seven hours of, you know, of material just to be, you know, and I said, how can I tell the story, you know, of each, I mean, because each, I mean, it's not a really long movement of puppetry because, you know, um, probably, you know, it's only 80 years movement when there's other countries that have had, you know, centuries of, you know, tradition of puppetry. So um, I said, let's just, you know, telling the story of each country in 15 minutes or 20 minutes is, you know, it's impossible. So then, uh, I don't know, maybe I was a little ignorant, I'm a theater person, not a, <laughs> and a filmmaker. I embarked in this crazy idea. I said, let's just do three documentaries let's do three like a like a series of you know like episodes and um, it took us six years six years to complete um, it was three movies you know basically three long movies and uh, and also to try to construct the story of you know the, the, the history of puppetry through the voices of the people that were interviewed uh, that was actually very challenging so that's how everything emerged, you know, and we were able to finish the project um, last year. And last year we had the last premiere uh, in Puerto Rico, um, uh, you know, with this last episode. Um, the first episode was premiered at the uh, Havana Film Festival, uh, the Cuba uh, episode. That was two years ago. Then we went to Dominican Republic, to the National Theater of Dominican Republic to present the episode. Um, I, I have to say that we have two, uh, uh, three, actually Christian, but two of the other editors that help us, that coincidentally, Christian is from Puerto Rico like me, but then we have one who works at Centro who also helped us, you know, edit the Dominican uh, and the Cuban uh, uh, documentary, and he's from Dominican Republic, and then we have George, who is, all, who is from Cuba, uh, that also helped us, you know, and he was one of the editors as well, so it's kind of funny that the three of them 
uh, the three editors were ex specifically the three from, from the three countries. So anyway, that's how everything emerged, and you know that's why we decided to do a series, uh, three different episodes on, 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 on puppetry in the Caribbean. Yeah. Did um, anything, I mean, you, uh, obviously you've been, and I'm kind of interested also to find out a little bit about how you got involved in puppetry, but um, I wanted to first ask, uh, since you, you've been part of this world for so long as you were doing this documentary, was there anything that surprised you that you f found out as you were going along? M many things, but the, the incredible thing is the, the influence, you know, like the three countries were influenced by other countries, obviously, because we don't have like a, like like uh, like an original tradition, it comes from somewhere else, and also the style of puppetry is very different from country to country. Even the the way we call things, you know, in, in in puppetry, and we're so close in the Caribbean. But for example, the the Cuban the Cuban uh, puppetry, they have a huge influence on you know obviously the Soviet Union. That you know, the, the many of the countries from Eastern Europe, from Russia. Uh, they 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 actually send people to study uh, with Obrasod with like grand uh, like great uh, teachers in you know from from Eastern Europe, um, uh, Dominican Republic they they are you know basically people from Latin America from Argentina from Venezuela are basically the people who introduce puppetry in the country and in Puerto Rico our uh, even though it was everything was promoted by Los Pueblos Santiago Lavandero. But our major influence is the United States. Uh, our teachers, like George Lachot, um, Bruce Chesse, obviously the influence of, of you know American television, like the Muppets, and then you can see the the three different styles, the three different um, ways of doing puppetry because of the teachers, you know that 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 initiated the movement in in the three islands. So that was actually something that surprised me. That you know now as a researcher. Is researcher looking from outside and, and, and comparing the three countries, even though we're so close culturally and, and, and geographically, um, we have very different ways of doing puppetry. Um, and it's because of our teachers and, and the people that, that introduce puppetry in, in our countries. Yeah, that, that is interesting. And I think in this film, it seems that you were saying you were struggling with how to tell the story, but it seems that uh, maybe over doing three films, you got kind of. Um, Better at doing that, that, that um, it seems very clear, these uh, three different generations that you talk about, and then the uh, television material and the festivals. I mean, it seems like a very clear uh, um, you know, uh, set out. And was that also something that you discovered as you were doing it, or what, were you kind of aware of that beforehand? Or? I think that um, we struggled. Uh, at the beginning, you know, I didn't want to have Narrations. Originally, we, I, you know, it was kind of like a TV show that I, we filmed. You know, they, Christian filmed me. Um, Those portions they, with him on camera, actually speaking to the camera. Exactly. And so I, it felt a little more like news or, or like a, some sort of a TV program. And then when we went into editing, we realized that that just didn't work with the style that we were going for. So and we, then want, we just relied entirely on on the voices them of telling the, the story. So that was difficult to create that script uh, that we were basically doing a little, you know, and also comparing with the little material that I had in terms of historical material because in Cuba I would say that they have uh, books and they have um, part of the of their, their history in terms of puppetry, you know, uh, published. And so I had some material. Dominican Republic, they didn't have anything. I had to basically reconstruct the story based on their stories and the oral, you know, basically it's like in the old times, you know, you're telling me and I want I, oral history. It, oral history. Um, so that was difficult like, when we decided not to use mm, my voice as a, as a researcher uh, or as a voiceover. For Puerto Rico though, um, I debated a lot whether or not I should be in the film and everybody was like, how can you not be in the film? This is a film about you know Puerto Rican puppetry. You're part of Puerto Rican puppetry movement. So in that way, it was kind of a little easier, um, even though we were so because I'm so uh, close to that history attached. and attached to that history. It was easier because whatever I felt that there was a gap, um, you know, that I couldn't have the that somebody uh, missed this information or was not clear enough. Then I was able to 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 say it, you know, and and my voice is there as as a voiceover, and also um, they they taped me as well, you know, they they recorded me. So 
So that was a little easier in that sense, but you know, again, I think the Puerto Rican um, episode is probably the most complete because it's the one that I'm more familiar, and also because I had a, I have done a lot of research prior to filming. Yeah. And um, Christian, so mm -hmm. in, in working on, because uh, you worked on a lot of films, but something that's about, is there something special or a different way of approaching a film that involves puppets and Well, puppetry? it was completely <laughs> new because when he approached me about it, um, you know, he had no prior like filmmaking experience, whereas I had no prior puppetry experience. So we sort of came together in that sense where it's a subject matter that I have no, you know, no, only no. seen your own only, only from him, only from being <laughs> around him all the time. Just, yeah, but but he was the expert on that, and I was the expert on the filmmaking aspect. Um, but even in that sense, it was still it was my first documentary as well. So, um, but I, in in terms of it being new, it was it was all new. I think it was it was new for the both of us for for um, Yeah. Yeah, and I, I want to ask you about well, so I mean, you and I spend a lot of time our time in our lives dealing with puppets, thinking about puppets, being excited about puppets, but it might be kind of uh, unusual to some other people. Uh, so t tell me, how did you get involved in puppetry, and why is it such an important art to you? Um, wow, that's, uh, <laughs> I actually, you know, it's a very, I'm going to give you a very short story. Uh, I was back in Vegalaja, Puerto Rico, where I'm from. A, um, a, I was in third grade. In my school, Jose Alberto Padilla, a group of people came to my school, a group of, 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 of puppeteers, and uh, they came to my school to perform one, of, uh, one show that actually right now I'm doing with my company. And it was one of those groups that, that were sponsored by the government, you know, created by uh, the, the Department of Education. They went to my school, <coughs> they performed, and when I saw that, it was my first puppet show. Uh, and it was not only a puppet show, it was the integrated uh, puppetry with live music, with actors, set. It was actually kind of like a big extravaganza for me as a kid, I still remember that. And I was uh, moved by that and I went home and I said, Mommy, I know what I'm going to do. I want to do that. And since third grade, I knew that I wanted to do puppetry or theater or music. I mean, everything that I saw there. I'm still doing it until today. And now I have the opportunity through my organization to go to the schools and, and present um, work and hopefully will be you know touching the life of some kids and that they might say, I want to do that as well. So that's really how I started. That's really how I started. And, and how do you, um, th this uh, wonderful company that you have that has several locations and is how do you manage that, and how does that that company work? I don't sleep. <laughs> uh, uh, no, it's it's we are believe it or not, about 80, 87 people in the company oh. right now. Um, Teatro se have grown have grown immensely. Uh, in Puerto Rico, we have our studio. Um, we perform there. We have smaller performances, and sometimes we bring some of the main performances that we do in our theater in New York to Puerto Rico. Um, and, but we have a core of puppeteers there, uh, probably four to five people that work with us. But then our puppet master, Jose Lopez, his studio is in Puerto Rico, that's Sea Puerto Rico. And, and everything that we produce here is actually constructed, designed and constructed in Puerto Rico, in our studio in Puerto Rico. Um, so that's basically what we do in Puerto Rico. Um, and obviously we participate in major festivals and, and all that. Um, a, and we visit schools and we do a, a, a pop festival uh, in rural areas every year there. Uh, in New York, we have, it's really where we have the headquarters. We have a theater on, on the Lower East Side. Um, it's actually our second space. We renovated a, you know, a, a, a space, a new theater. Um, we opened, it's not new anymore. We've been there for seven years uh, at the Clemente Soto Vélez Cultural Center on the Lower East Side. And we, uh, we have a repertory of over 20 productions. Not, not all of them are puppetry. I would say 70% uh, of them have puppets in it. Uh, but we, are, we operate as a, as a children's theater, as a, as a theater for young audiences. And also we do performances for adults as well. Um, and we have workshops and residencies in schools. And, and then in Florida, um, we basically are in partnership with some other organizations where we bring a production every year. And of course, you know, that's, that's where we were doing the, the documentary. It was kind of like our audiovisual um, 
uh, division. Um, even though more and more uh, we keep getting requests because you know the, the Puerto Rican community have grown so much in Florida, and um, and a lot of people are saying you need to bring your program in here. There's nothing, so there's more than a million Puerto Ricans now in in, in Florida, and they and not not to mention millions of Latinos as well. And there's nothing like what we do there. So um, we're really. Uh, uh, closely uh, looking at this uh, uh, possibility of really bring, doing more uh, down there. Mm. So that's that's really how, and we manage it with you know, uh, there's family involved. You know, like my my sisters help me help, help me run you know, say a Puerto Rico, and my brother-in-law in Florida, and when Christian was in Florida, you know, so it's like uh, that's how we do. It's kind of like a family business, but with a lot of other people involved as well. And, and did working on this film, especially at the end, you talk about what's the future of puppetry, did, it, did working through the film make you think through in a new way uh, what you wanted to do with your company at all? I think, yeah. Um, I think before the film, you know, I, we, we tried to do, um, first of all, we have a very clear mission, which is to preserve, you know, Latino heritage, Puerto Rican heritage, our language, our traditions, our culture through theater and to share it not only with uh, Latinos, but also with non-Latinos as an educational tool. Uh, but uh, in terms of puppetry, I try and we try to introduce a new style of puppetry in every single new show that we do, uh, or combine puppetry styles, or create new things, combining techniques and all that. Uh, because puppetry are obviously our puppet style, or hand puppets, or marionettes. There's so many different styles of puppet and object theater. So we just opened a new show on Saturday, and it's the first time that we're kind of integrating like um, uh, strings, like doing oh, marionettes. Oh, it's wow. very simple, four <laughs> strings, but you know, like they're more, they're kind of like a combination of uh, they're more like Czech uh, marionettes. So every single show that we do and that I do, I try to use a different style of puppetry. Um, so in certain way, yeah, it, it's. Uh, yeah, and I have learned so much also from Cuban puppetry, from Dominican puppetry, also from my colleagues in Puerto Rico. So I, I feel like uh, all that is reflected in, in my work as well. And um, how has the hurricane impacted what's going on? Uh, a lot. It was, you know, still, and there's a lot of struggle in the puppetry community. Uh, we were able to help. Um, many puppeteers uh, that you know we were giving them like mini grants of you know we, we raised some money in collaboration with um, Pregones Theater and Puerto Rican Traveling Theater and other institutions and uh, personally I helped you know a couple of uh, of my uh, uh, puppeteers like for example one of them you know they, he lost his workshop so we were able to buy them like a sewing machine and to give them material um, to give them th these mini grants. Our studio suffered a little bit. We just finished the reconstruction uh, a month ago of our studio. Um, Actually, it, while we were finishing the documentary, um, yeah. the, after the hurricane had, had gone through, um, we were actually struggling because we were still receiving material from some of the puppeteers there. Yeah. So what, whether it was old photographs or footage, so that actually affected as well because you know a lot of them couldn't you know there, there's things that they had lost or things that they couldn't send to us because of because of that so it was around the it was around the same time like right after and we we wanted to do this also after the hurricane as like really like as a gift to the puppetry community in Puerto Rico so on March 21st which is the the international day of puppetry um, uh, this year, this year we rented like the the most, the biggest and most <laughs> expensive and amazing um, movie theater in Puerto Rico. Uh, it's at the Popular Center and it's, it's called Fine Arts uh, Cinema. And uh, we did a gala for all the puppeteers mm -hmm. and the families, and it was packed. And people, you know, it was amazing because I was able to to put together the three generations of, of puppeteers uh, in one event, which w they hardly meet, you know? And uh, it was very, very special. It was, uh, you know, people cry, people laugh, people applaud every, you know, <laughs> every time they see themselves in the big uh, screen. And it was very special. And since then, you know, 
many things have emerged. I believe that they are, you know, the, the puppetry community is united. Uh, it's the same thing in Dominican Republic. Uh, uh, they basically, the, the puppetry movement have really fell up. You know, they were not as active. And after they went to see this the, this documentary, I first of all, they were like so impressed saying, how come a foreigner have, you know, come and tell our story? Uh, but they were really in tears and, and very thankful. And now there's, they're, they're opening a new UNIMA center in, in Dominican Republic. They're, you know, we kind of like uh, rekindled, you know, like that spirit, that spirit, and, and they are basically getting together and, move, and moving forward, which I am very happy that this uh, project uh, produced that effect. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think puppeteers, you know, even in the film, we see that puppeteers are really either kind of self-taught or they, you know, uh, apprentice with somebody and at the end of the discussion of whether we should, you know, they should start a school in Puerto Rico or not, there's not, uh, uh, there's um, always such lack of kind of sense of uh, community or recognition, you know, and it tends to be very much puppeteers working on their own. So something like this, a project like this that kind of really constructs a history and shows a whole kind of cultural tradition and a community uh, and all of their connections, I think is really important. And uh, uh, I don't want to say completely unusual, but you know, the, the world of puppetry doesn't always have that as much as we should. And um, so yeah, I think it's really important and I'm glad to hear that it's so inspiring to people because they can see themselves as part of something bigger um, and not just their own struggles uh, day to day to just get a show together and make a living. Um, One yeah. thing that is producing, uh, the, the documentary is producing, uh, a, which is really amazing and I feel very proud, um, is that like, for example, last month we were presenting the documentary in Uruguay at a, at a UNIMA conference, at the South America UNIMA conference. And I presented actually the, the episode three, the, the Puerto Rico one. And I was kind of concerned because it's really very regional, very specific, you know, for like, so every time we, I presented to a non Puerto Rican or non Caribbean uh, crowd, I'm concerned. So this is very academic, very, you know, historical. Is this interesting, you know, in, interesting for this crowd? And they were mesmerized, um, and the comments were amazing. And not only that, people were looking, for example, the people from Venezuela, uh, because there were like 13 countries represented there. The, the people from Venezuela, they asked me if they could use it as the model for them to, to tell their story. So uh, resources to be able to do a, their own documentary for, for, for Venezuela. It's also happening in other places, like in Cuba. You know, we were able, since the movement is so big, we were basically telling little, you know, pieces here and there. Um, but now they are done three documentaries just on, in Cuba. On Cuba. Exactly. <laughs> so now uh, there are filmmakers and puppeteers, you know, working and say, okay, we're going to continue using the same format. Uh, uh, so it was. I'm proud of that because that's you know I know that that, that, that people are going to be con you know recording and preserving stories, and you know as researchers as we are, uh, we know and also the work that Centro uh, is doing for many years is basically that preservation and 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 somebody has to do it and in puppetry we like you said with this uh, that hardly happens. Yeah, and it's and I mean like this, like so many of the things that go on in puppetry, the festivals, like your your film shows, and that we know is done by puppeteers. Exactly. Puppeteers have created their own uh, infrastructures, their own communities, their own organizations. Um, and a few exciting. of the a few of the puppeteers that we interviewed actually had passed soon after we we had filmed as well. So that made it even more, yeah, you know, right. important. To, for us to have their story, and it's their only like their only time that they've been on camera have been documented oh, wow. to talking about for, that history. So, like the Cuban documentary, uh, there's two or three people that of the pioneers that pass uh, uh, before we. So the, when we went to the film festival, the whole community was there because it was they wanted to see and to honor. It's like the last time, and you know, like the mm -hmm. and um, it's incredible because you know in the Cuban documentary, there's also. Um, obviously, politics are involved. Um, uh, what happened after the, re the, revolution, the revolution and all that. So, uh, a very uh, sad moment, you know, in the film. With somebody talking about uh, an event that happened during the 70s, where the government was. Uh, it's called paramétration, where the government was actually um, 
taking some people away from their field, from the from the field, and put them in different places because they didn't match uh, a certain criteria, and uh, uh, and and that you know the arts, especially people you know that were against homosexuality at that time and all that. So for somebody to speak about that in a film, it was kind of like the first thing that that has not happened, you know, and so it became really important um, that they had. A, a voice of someone who passed away telling the story of what happened in the 70s. So, um, yeah, so I, and also the fact that we able able to, I mean, I was able to get Leopoldo Santiago Lavandero, he's like, I interviewed him for my doctoral dissertation when, you know, in no night, intention of using no it intention. in a documentary years <laughs> later. Like in 1993, 1996, I believe yeah. it, it was, uh, when I was young. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so then, you know, and, and I found that, I'm like, oh, this is very valuable. The fact that Centro was so kind to, to share, you know, the, the, you know, some of the footage and photographs of Pura del Pre, which I think she's the first uh, Puerto Rican, you know, puppeteer. Um, a, 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 a woman, an Afro-Puerto Rican in the diaspora, I think that's all very important that even the Puerto Ricans didn't know. So um, I, I feel that, that there's value in, in, in what we have done, it's, um, even though sometimes we feel a little like, oh, embarrassed because, you know, like, uh, uh, well, we wanted to do something technically better or, you know, we needed more footage or we, whatever technically things that I learned because now I'm a filmmaker. <laughs> uh, uh, so, um, but I think there's a, a lot of value, not only for, pop, for, for puppetry, not only for the, the Caribbean, but um, what we created is, is a model for other people to, to continue to improve it to, you know, so I'm proud of that. We should be proud. Yeah, so, and I, I'm actually, one of the amazing things I think is just the amount of material, like the imagery, all of the images that you have, we're seeing so many different kinds of puppetry from yes. so many different companies, and I mean, it's just an enormous amount of material. Which was incredibly difficult to assemble because <laughs> it was us entirely relying on the organizations and the individuals we interviewed to compile all that for us, especially yeah. if it, you know, if we're not familiar with what they have um, so and, and again that maybe in some of the other in the Dominican Republic documentary or the Cuban one it was it was a little different but but it was it was more but it, it was a challenge still to, to be able to get all these old photographs or all this footage that you know where do you start where do you begin compiling all this material that many people just didn't even know existed so that's well, why a lot of people that the reaction when they watch is I didn't even know that we could have still found you know that old footage or, the, or those pictures oh, okay. Or even so, the resolution, you know, because right. where they, that was, uh, there was very challenging, and, and I still see a lot of, you know, pixelated photos and all that, because that's what we were able to get, that's the only that thing that they yeah. had. Uh, so um, it, it was it was very difficult, but, uh, but it's done. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really glad you're able to, to uh, um, involve so much of the material from El Centro, which is really good. Yes, great. yes, the yes, yes. Material is here. I want to give an opportunity for folks who are here to ask. So, um, the documentary talks a bit of the new wave of, of publishing for adults. Yes. And you talk about what uh, any trends that you're seeing, like what brings adults to a, a puppeteer? Well, puppetry originally really was for adults. It's always been for everyone, actually. Uh, it was basically night in the 19th century that you know that started, you know, the scholarization of you know, or, or using puppetry and then for kids and all that kind of thing. That's when it changed. But uh, in Puerto Rico, the and not only Puerto Rico, I think throughout the, the three islands, the notion was that puppetry was for children, and uh, it is not until I mean. Tere Marichal, like I said, you know, she was fan she's fantastic. She started in the 70s doing puppetry for adults, talking about the, the environment, talking about politics and all that, and people thought she was crazy. Even till today, some people might think that she's crazy, and she's fantastic, talented uh, a performer. And a, But then, a political, uh, in Dominican Republic, there's Things here and there, that, you know, but not there's really not a, a movement of puppetry for adults. 
Um, I don't know if that answered your question, but yeah. But, but yeah. also, it is interesting, sorry, that, um, that in Puerto Rico, the newer groups that are emerging, you see that they are mostly it's adult poetry. Yeah. You see newer groups coming up in Puerto Rico. Experimental, like, right. you know, uh, like. So that does seem to be where it moves, where it's moving. I would add, you know, that really around the world, there's, and in New York, there's a lot of puppetry that's for adults. And maybe another way of thinking about it is um, as a kind of interesting theater, and the theater that's really mining the visual potential that yes. puppetry has, that's and the right. idea of making objects and move and seeing things in a new way. So it's all of these wonderful tools for creating really exciting theater, and why shouldn't they be a part of all of our theater? You know? Even here on Broadway. Yeah, Broadway, used. we've got you know, tons of, of things happening. Yeah. Uh, War Horse, uh, Lion King, you know, uh, just the kind of, and I, I mean, my personally what I feel is also that we've become such a visual culture uh, with so much ex you know, exposure to the internet and to you know, television and everything that um, we want that kind of visual excitement on stage, and so puppetry is kind of infiltrating everywhere. And also puppets can, like, like some of the uh, people that we interview say, you know, puppets can do things that actors cannot do. Uh, uh, and, and it's amazing how everyone connects with, with the object, with the animated object, uh, not only kids. Uh, it's a wonderful tool for kids, and it's a wonderful theater, theatrical resource. But, uh, but yeah, more and more um, puppetry for adults is happening all over the world and in, th in the Caribbean as well, yes. Other questions? Yes. Uh, what are your, any new projects that you're thinking of doing in the future? In film projects? Uh, no, and in puppetry. Well, I am, a, I, well, we just opened a new show. Uh, we have a, a, for the next three years, we have many different, um, uh, uh, projects and, and proposals that are you know integrating puppetry. Uh, I think the biggest thing we have done was you know to create this international puppet fringe festival that just happened during um, August, uh, where we had literally thousands of people you know uh, uh, enjoying puppetry, mostly for adults actually, and experimental puppetry, and that was a huge endeavor uh, that I that I didn't think that it would. I mean. I, I had my expectations, but I didn't know that it was so successful like it was. It was an amazing festival of five days. Um, uh, ten countries participated, uh, top companies from Europe, from Latin America. It was really amazing, and it was sold out, almost everything. So um, we have 42 performances in five days, and, it, and uh, uh, three different exhibitions of puppetry, uh, symposiums, Films. I mean, it was really an, an amazing and they were, that's going to happen every two years. So it's a biennial festival. Uh, we started to fundraise already for the next one. Uh, uh, and so the next one is going to be in 2020. Uh, but that's basically one of the, the, the things that we're, we're doing. And of course, productions, we just did a, a Shakespeare, you know, a, a Latino Shakespeare uh, with over 65 puppets. Uh, we're bringing back, we're going to be doing a Cervantes piece uh, uh, with, with puppets and, and live music. I mean, there's a lot of things that are, are, are in, in, that we're working uh, in, in Teatro Sea. Um, and in terms of film, I actually mentioned to Juan, uh, just like minutes before I sat down here, that the next thing is like, uh, uh, well, we're doing, we're doing it, we're going to start a, a web series uh, very soon uh, for children in Spanish and English. Uh, it's called El Avión, the Airplane, and, uh, and it integrates puppets and actors. And uh, it's actually uh, the first 13 episodes is about um, reinforcing the self-esteem of the immigrant kids, you know, because they have been attacked tremendously in the past year. So it's, it's a whole campaign about how valuable we are uh, in our bicultural reality, in our, with our bi bi and, and it's, you know, monsters. It's kind of like Moped style. It's really beautiful what's happening. I'm gonna be one of the pilots. Uh, I'm very excited about that. And we've been working very hard to get, you know, we haven't filmed yet, but we have everything ready to, 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 to start filming, hopefully in January. And, uh, and then, you know, say I's gonna become 35 in two years, which I cannot believe uh, that I've been doing this for 35 years. And I, I was mentioning to Juan that uh, probably our next project should be 
to tell our story, at, you know, and, and, and through a documentary. So um, Centro have done that actually in the, in the small you know pieces that you guys produce for the for your Centro Voices uh, a program, uh, but now to do like a a long uh, a documentary is probably my next idea. And uh, uh, yeah. Uh, So we have to create another event to do that. <laughs> no, we we are uh, we're planning to release them soon. Um, uh, we're trying to see if we can get some of the public television stations in the in the islands to you know to purchase. You know, we have also sent it to a couple of film festivals. We have won some awards, which I'm like surprised that we have won some awards as well in some festivals. Uh, but uh, hopefully by by next year, early next year, we're gonna. Uh, release them and, and you know and, and and sell them as a series, uh, but yeah, but we're definitely going to uh, to be screening the the three documentaries, uh, universities even in Teatro Sea. We did it during the puppet film the the puppet fringe festival. So um, just yeah, we, you're gonna have the opportunity. I I think now seeing the Puerto Rico and, and being able to see the Cuban and the the Dominican is actually great, great way because then you can compare and. Uh, I just saw in this, your film that there's a difference between acting for puppetry and different for adults or other theater. So uh, if one were to inhabit a puppet environment, a world of puppetry, is there a way of acting for that as opposed to if I were to pick up a script of a uh, long day's journey for night as an actor and begin to work on it? I uh, would go a particular way, but if I were to do that with puppets, I I kind of a little bit of an insight into Claudia that hers was really definite and it's big. I couldn't see an adult do that big stuff on stage, but it works so beautifully with the Hell Yeah. So when I saw that, I thought, is there a way that an actor has to approach creating I know because I work a lot in opera and I know trying to segue between the text and then breaking the music, um, you have to swell it and live up to the emotions. So that's the question. Is there a acting style for puppetry? I think that's many people might have different answers. I've been doing this for so long that I believe that um, I feel that you know the puppet or the object immediately as soon as we start animating an object you know yourself as a performer and also the audience that is looking at you you know gets transported to a different reality which is a fantasy you know and everything is accepted so in terms of performing it you know I think that you have to put the same heart and soul that you put in developing a character but in this time is how do you transmit it to this object um, and that there's many different ways of doing that, but in my case as a director and also as a performer, I think it has to do with the focus of the performer in the object. Um, uh, right now I just finished a production and uh, I'm working with actors that are trying to become puppeteers and they are, are achieving it, but one of the major things that I said or the basic things that I said to them is that if you do not look at the object, you know, you the object disappears. If I look at the glass that I am moving, you know, the audience immediately will start looking at the glass, and this start, you know, becoming uh, what I am giving, you know, what I'm. So for me, the the focal point and the the sight, I don't know, if this makes sense, but it's so important. As soon as I stop looking at this, you know, people will not be looking at this, and this dies as well. So uh, it's just. One, I could tell you about many other techniques and many other things, but as, as, a, as a performer, uh, it's basically the same character work, the same, you know, that you will do, you know, with your body, but in this case, how do you transmit it to an object and you do it through your sight? So, um, that's, it's, I don't know if this answers your question, well, but it's just one, yeah. Because in looking at the glass, there's 
does it tell you who its voice is, what its voice is? Does it tell you what its movement is? Does it give you the vocabulary that heretofore you wouldn't have? I think the connection, it's like it's, you know, you create it in that, in, and it's, it gives it, it, I mean, you give basically the, you animate this thing and you are, you're giving the sense of it. Uh, I mean, but obviously the glass talks to me too. Yeah, why not? Uh, so uh, it, it's it's kind of uh, odd for some people that are not performers, but but it's 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 really there's a relationship. That's what is so important. This this connection uh, with the object. Yeah. yeah. And you have to work with you know the whatever your object is has is both offering you things and it has limitations. Yeah. And so you have to figure out how you know if there's something you want to express like the happiness of the glass you know how does the limitations you know what what could allow you to do that do you have to add something to it you know or can you do it with just this so there's a whole world of exploration depending on all those kinds of objects that there are. And it's, it's uh, totally creative. I mean, as far as you know, comes up in the moment as yeah. what it is. It's, it's really interesting and, and some people, that's why some people have this misconception and that, you know, that, that puppetry is only, a, you know, entertainment or, you know, like puppetry could be very profound, you know, very, as, as very um, magical. I see it as a magical thing too, you know, so how, how can something that is inanimate, inanimated, you know, all of a sudden can breathe and can, you know, have its, its own life. So anyway, we're becoming a little philosophical here, but it's, it's like, this is, yeah. Well, actually, it's practical because I'm uh, in pre-production for a production of uh, JB, I just wrote the page. Right. It's based upon Joe. And uh, I want uh, to introduce puppetry. So Excellent. That way. And um, it's a hard sell. There's a money in the pockets. Mm -hmm. uh, they will get it. And, but I do. I, I see where it's got to be extended. They'll get it. You'll yeah, see. Yeah, puppets well, very popular right now. They'll so get it. Um, I don't know if uh, we I think end of our time. I just want to say, uh, well, first of all, thank you both for being here and for this wonderful um, movie. And uh, you know, you've done so much for so many communities: the puppetry community, the children's theater community, the Latino community here in New York. Uh, it's really amazing, and the kind of work you do um, and put your energy into so many projects. So thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, Claudia. Thank, thank, thank you, and thank you, Sam. Thank, thank you. you.